What's up guys? Uh, today we're going to show you how I painted this Imperial Navy Axe Jack. Uh, you can kind of translate this across your entire army. Um, this is the way I'm going to paint my entire Imperial Navy team. Uh, so if you follow these steps you'll get results just like these. Alright guys, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start painting. Uh, the biggest chunk of color on this model is the uh, the cape or the cloak whatever you want to call it and for that we're using uh, some Thunderhawk blue we're just gonna base coat the entire coat you can if you want to do multiple layers go ahead and knock that out too but you want to come back with a nice full coverage all right, so once we get the, the base coat put down on the coat, we're going to go ahead and switch over to Corvus Black, and we're just going to basically uh, grab any other cloth details. So I'm going to go ahead and get the gloves. I'm going to get all the rubber around the joints and um, the pants. Now the pants in the artwork are also blue, or in the artwork, in the example shots. But for me, personally, I wanted to create a little bit more of a separation between uh, these two elements on the model. So I went with something that was kind of blue, but, you know, its own thing. Alright, so uh, now that that's dried, we've gone ahead, we've, gone ahead, we've taken some uh, Payne's Gray from Golden Acrylics. We've mixed that into our uh, pants color. And what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to grab like the bottom or the inside of all the folds, the bottoms of, uh, you know, where it's pointing down, basically, is what I'm getting at here. Um, just to create some shadows. Now, Payne's Gray is another one of those, like, it's not black, but it's kind of in the realm of black. Um, it reads black, especially when uh, there's no other context around it. Like, I can see it against the black primer here, but... Um, once I cover all that up, it's going to look black. So this is going to be, in essence, the black on my model. Now we're also going to take that same Payne's Gray, and we're going to mix some of that into our Thunderhawk Blue. And we don't need very much of that. A little bit goes a long way. Um, and we're going to basically do the same thing. We're going to grab inside the folds. Um, and then anywhere we think there's going to be shadows. Um, so like, kind of, you can use it to line up around the holster on the gun. You can use it inside of here, and then we'll pick out, you know, what we've dried up earlier. I'm going to mix just a teeny bit more in there. Just get that a little bit darker. Make it more of a proper shadow. Now, you don't have to do it in steps. Um, I think this is going to be one of those cases where it's going to look better because I did it in steps just because that's the way blue works. Um, but yeah, just, you know, pop your shadows in where you want them. And then we will uh, come back and talk highlights. All right, so now that everything has been uh, kind of shaded down a little bit, we're going to go ahead and work on highlighting now. Uh, so I'm going to use the same principle here. I'm going to use a universal highlight color. So pretty much any color on here can be highlighted using this. We're going to use Aired Earth. Uh, so starting with our dark colors, we're going to go ahead and mix that into that Corvus Black. It's going to make like a really nice warm gray color. And we're going to use that just to highlight the pants a little bit. And that kind of makes them really stand out on their own. Uh, now this isn't as intense when it dries, but... Uh, it is a nice way to highlight them regardless. Um, uh, same thing with uh, the gloves. Go ahead and grab the knuckles. And you can highlight the rubber at this stage if you want. I find it's a little easier to highlight it and then shade it down than it is to shade it and then highlight it back up. So grab that little banding here. And then we'll come back and wash those off uh, separately. So, all right. And now we're going to go ahead. We've mixed that uh, 
yellow that aired Earth into our um, Thunderhawk blue, and we're just going to grab some highlights now. And what this is going to do is, again, it's going to pull things into that warm highlight space. It's going to keep its kind of blue color. Um, and we have like a universal highlight color for all of these cloth features and stuff on the model. Um, now if you push this a little too far, it does look green. And if you leave it by itself, it definitely looks green. Uh, but because we're putting it next to and on top of the color that it is, or one of the colors that it is, uh, it looks how it's supposed to look. Uh, so grab all those highlights, grab the top folds, uh, anything that's kind of sticking out and you want to be that color. Um, I'm also going to go ahead and paint the trim of the coat in this color because this is going to get pushed into like a different kind of territory anyway. So uh, this will just kind of help nurture that along when we get to it. Okay, so now that we've got all the cloth and the rubber and stuff painted on the model, uh, things look pretty good, I think. Um, we're going to go ahead and start working on the metal parts. So this might be a complete nonsense mix. It might work. It might not do anything, but this is what I'm using. So we're going about 50-50 with, uh, I'm using the Army Painter's Greedy Gold. I really like... Uh, the coverage, I like how reflective and shiny and how nice it looks, um, but it's a little too bright for what I want for this model. So we're going to mix in two drops of bright brass from Vallejo Model Air. And we're going to give that a good little mix, and I think it dulls down the gold a little bit. It's still shiny, but it's not so in your face. Um, now on the palette, it doesn't look insanely different but I do like the way it looks. And we're gonna go ahead and base coat uh, literally all of the, the armor in this. So the whole boot, um, the wrist guards, and then like this little shoulder chest plate thing, and we're gonna grab the helmet too. So come back when that's done. All right, now while all that gold is still drying, we're gonna go ahead and just take this opportunity I'm going to grab some Nuln Oil. This is pretty much the only place you're going to use Nuln Oil in this entire video. Um, and we're just going to wash these uh, rubber parts around the joints. What that's going to do is if you messed up uh, any of the highlighting step, it just kind of reinforces those shadows for you. And you don't really have to think too much about um, you know, painstakingly going back in there and highlighting those areas again. Uh, you can also do the gloves here if you want. I didn't do the gloves, or well, I over-highlighted the gloves. There we go. Uh, and that's pretty much it for this step. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and take a step away from metallics just for a tiny bit. We're going to go ahead and base coat this uh, axe in Rhinox Hide. Just kind of get a nice dark brown base on everything. Uh, we're also going to go ahead and grab the belt and the pouch. Um, hanging from his waist. All right, and then just for the wood sections, I've mixed some of that arid earth into my Rhinox hide. We've made a little bit of a highlight. I'm gonna kind of trace this front edge here. Um, try not to get too far on like the side of it. And then I'm also gonna grab like about half of that back edge. And then we're gonna grab some of the middle section just kind of make it look like a little bit of wood grain here. Uh, now we are going to wash this back just so that uh, it still retains that look, but we want to give it a little bit of variety. You can also use this here to highlight the, uh, the pouch if you want to. Uh, I do find that using washes helps leather look more like leather. Um, so just grab the edges, grab where you think that there's going to be the most wear and tear. So like um, you know, around the, the open edges, I imagine you'd see a lot of wear, and then like where these wrinkles are, and then you can even like cut in, I see a lot of people cut in like little scratches and stuff, 
or do like little stipples um, just to kind of again create that impression that the leather has been worn down a little bit uh, not entirely necessary but can help sell the effect all right so now that the gold is officially dry we're gonna go ahead and throw on some Reichlin flesh shade or a flesh shade of your choice uh, this is like an orangey kind of brown uh, I guess you could mix I, I the closest thing I'd call it would be a mix of like their orange shade and their sepia shade so like there's some yellow in there and stuff but you just want to wash all this down you let it get into the recesses go a little heavier on like the boots because um, that's going to kind of add to any like grime factor I guess uh, but it really kind of kills some of the gold aspect of this and it makes it look like that worn uh, kind of brass I guess and it's really in the next step it's really going to kind of come into its own alright guys now I think this is kind of the sauce of this whole paint scheme um, so we've washed our brass down, we've, um, you know, got a nice base coat on there. We're going to take just a tiny bit of iron hand steel and we're going to mix in just a little bit of, uh, that brass and it's going to really pull that brass down. Uh, it's, it's still going to have that brass color, but it's not going to be as anywhere near as intense. It's going to be very dull. Um, I would almost say it's like a pale gold. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this color and we're just going to paint this into the middle of every panel. So here on the shoulder we've got like this, the shoulders broken into three panels. We're just going to paint it right here on the top. We're going to avoid the panel line. We're going to leave a little bit of space, but just kind of make sure that gets in there. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to grab this little front section here, just touch it in there. And then we're going to go around to the back. Now the, the big thing I'm going to say here, and this is a really good example here, is on the backpack. There's a, um, I don't know what my thing is doing here. It's like when I when I get my hand into the frame, it darkens the picture a ton. Um, there's the Imperial Eye. I'm going to paint around that, and I'm just going to leave that eye alone. Uh, I think that looks fine. It's like a weathered gold look. Um, and then this again, where that wash is kind of settled up against that eye and into the corners and stuff, it helps that stand out on its own. And then you've still got that brassy metal color, um, you know, surrounding it. So it kind of frames it a little bit. Um, take your time. Work your way around the panels. Uh, you know, do the shoulders, do the chest, do the, the upper half of the model. Walk away for a few minutes. Come back. Uh, we're going to go ahead and finish that up, and then we're basically going to be in the home stretch. Most of what's left is like minor details and stuff. Alright, so while we're here, we're going to go ahead and grab the last little bit of these metallic details. So I'm just going to grab that iron hand steel. I'm going to grab the axe head, paint that in. Um, the top and bottom of the tank that's poking out, and the gun on his hip. I think are the biggest spots. Uh, one other area of note is I the in the official images, uh, the entire sole of the shoe is done in silver. I just grab these lar the largest of these like protruding things. I don't worry about the small ones. I just grab the biggest ones. I think it adds a lot of interest to the foot without like making silver like the dominating color because um, it, it looks almost like there's layers I mean I guess technically there is but all right we'll be back all right so now we're gonna go ahead and take our Payne's gray we're gonna mix just a little bit of that into some dragon red we're gonna make like a really nice deep dark red and I'm gonna grab just this little section here on the axe um, I'm gonna grab the visor just to kind of get that started. Um, 
and then I'm going to grab just that little bit of the gun that's poking out from the front of the holster. Alright, so now we're ready to go ahead and hit the uh, entirety of the axe with null oil, even the handle. Uh, and then we're also going to go ahead and grab this little pipe here on the uh, side of his... Uh, or that's coming out of the um, air tank, I guess. And now I'm going to take that and I'm just wipe my finger across it. And that should keep it in most of the recesses, but get rid of a lot of that excess. That's a little better. Alright. Alright, so now we're going to grab the couple of white details that are on the kit. Uh, we're going to go ahead and grab the inside of this little, uh, the I guess the meter on his air tank. And then on the front, uh, we're going to go ahead and grab this little bit of detail around the eye mask. So just that little band that goes around his eyes. Um, now another thing we can do is we're going to go ahead and also paint the trim of the... Uh, jacket finally you know 10 years later uh, go ahead and take care of that okay next we're going to grab our sepia wash um, and we're just going to kind of gently stipple some of this we're going to use a small brush uh, just to kind of dirty this up just a tiny little bit uh, you don't need a whole lot just a couple drops really um, and then we're just going to kind of use that brush to bring that around and, you know, not make that look so clean. Alright, so now we're going to take some Mephiston Red or a red that you like. doesn't really matter all too much. We're going to thin it down with a bunch of medium. Uh, I mean, you can use water, but you're going to get a much better effect if you use medium. And we're just going to make sure there's no excess on the brush. We're just going to grab the area around the visor. Now, this shouldn't be too, too strong, but we are going to create like a glowing effect here. So just kind of grab that whole front area on the visor. And then you might even see a little bit of difference if you drag a little bit of that red into the visor. Now this might take like one or two layers to get a nice, uh, not like patchy looking red. But you don't want it to be like full opacity. You just want that, the impression that that's red. So we'll come back when that's done. Alright, so this is going to be the hardest part for me to do personally. Just because I'm trying to do it on camera. Um, so I'm going to take that same red, but we're not going to do all the crazy thinning. We're going to thin it just a teeny little bit. And I'm just going to try and grab the inside of this visor here. So. Now red's kind of a tricky color to work with because it's naturally transparent. So just take your time, do a couple layers. Let it dry, come back. Alright, so next I've taken Wild Rider Red and I've mixed just a little bit into that previous red. And what we're going to do is we're going to try and grab the center of this visor. Just like that. And then we're going to grab that top edge where um, the visor meets the helmet. Just like a slight edge highlight. Next, we're going to take pure Wild Rider Red, and we're just going to get a smaller area on the inside of that visor. So 
something like that. Next, I'm going to take a little bit of white and mix that into that Wild Rider Red. And we're just going to, again, just grab that inner section. Then we're going to mix just a little bit more white in. We're going to grab an even smaller section. And then the last step we can do, we're just going to do it right on top because that was such a thin, small layer of paint. We're just going to grab that whatever white we're using and we're just going to do like the smallest section here in the middle. And that's going to be our glow effect. Now if you wanted to, you could definitely go back and grab that red glaze and kind of pull it around a little bit more now that you've got it sort of where you want it, but I didn't want it to be super, super strong. Alright, so we've got a couple small things left to do before we wrap this guy up. Uh, the first big thing is uh, we're going to paint his axe handle uh, and the gun. I, don't, I can't believe I, I didn't do that, but we're going to paint those red. So just this little... I say the axe handle, the, the part of the axe that's not the blade. Uh, so we're going to throw red on that, and we're going to throw red on this uh, gun body here. And then while that's drying, we're going to go ahead and grab just that last little bit of detail on the axe head itself. I'm going to come back with this Iron Hands Steel. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to take the, the sharp point of the blade and I'm just going to draw a bunch of lines using this steel color so that it looks like the axe has been, I did not wash the bottom of that, <laughs> I'll fix that later. Um, and then we're going to do the same thing with the bottom. We're just going to draw a bunch of little lines. And then we'll probably wash it again and then repeat the process a couple times. Um, the last, like, real major detail is once this red is covered and dried, um, we need to hit it with a wash and then just kind of highlight it up just a little bit. Nothing too crazy. I like the, the dark, uh, like, I like the way that red kind of works and interacts with black um, and I like that the red's kind of patchy and it kind of gives us that look that um, this is something that's been used a lot uh, with a lot or with with a little bit of effort we really don't have to spend too much time creating that effect because the paint itself does that for us so I'll be back in just a second all right, so we're going to go back to that original red mix. We're going to thin it down just a little bit. And we're going to drag this pigment towards, like, the bottom. Because I imagine that's kind of where the light's going to collect on something like this, uh, with the angle that it's sitting at. Um, and just kind of, like, don't go crazy here, but, like, stipple it a little bit, kind of drag it a little bit. Uh, don't look for like a uniform big base coat or whatever, like an edge highlight or anything like that. Uh, next, we're going to take that Wild Rider Red from earlier. We're going to pretty much do the same thing. We're going to just, with the, with the brush still wet and dirty with the, the previous red, we're just going to put that Wild Rider Red on there. And we're just going to kind of drag some of that to the bottom. Just create that little bit of highlight at the bottom. Um, grab this corner. And then once that dries, I think that'll look really cool. So that's pretty much where I'm going to leave this. I think I'm more than satisfied with it. Uh, he oops, took a little bit longer than I expected him to, but I am quite pleased with the way he came out. Um, hopefully you like him too. Uh, and hopefully if you want your um, Imperial Navy to look like this, you'll check out and follow this tutorial. Uh, we're going to do one more tutorial on these guys specifically. Uh, we're going to do bases. So here's the model I did to test this uh, entire scheme out. It's the Navis Commander. 
uh, or whatever she's called. Uh, I gave her a custom base. I don't know how, how well it's showing up, but hopefully pretty good. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to pop this guy off the base, and in the next video we're going to do a base for him.